Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I could not wait to do this video. Um, I'm going to be making candy corn fudge. I couldn't think for a second, my mind went blank. Um, candy corn fudge, I've been making this recipe for the last five years or so for my family. Um, but I can't wait to share it with you. I found it on Pinterest five or so years ago. Um, you can Google it, there's a lot of different recipes, but the recipe I'm gonna show you today is two ingredients minus the food coloring. So this is delicious. My kids and my husband absolutely love candy corn fudge. Um, so it's basically like a white chocolate candy corn fudge. It looks like candy corn, it doesn't taste like it. It's more like a creamy um, vanilla fudge. So, or white chocolate fudge rather. Um, so I'm super excited to share this recipe with you. This is a great um, little treat to give your neighbor or the kids teachers um, or just to keep for yourself. So whichever you want to do. So let me get started. I'm going to show you the ingredients. All right, so you're going to need two bags of white chocolate chips. I'm using the Ghirardelli chocolate chips just because I couldn't find any chocolate chips that did not contain peanuts or were manufactured with peanuts, these are not. Um, so you're gonna need two bags of these, two cans of the sweetened condensed milk, the 14 ounces, you're gonna need two of those. And then you're gonna need food coloring for the orange and the yellow. And then you're going to need an eight by eight glass pan, and then you're gonna line that with some wax paper. And then here I just have a cute little boo little dish that I can display them in. Um, they do have to be refrigerated, I believe. So once you have them, you can put them in like a sealed container or you can put them in a cute baggie with some orange and black ribbon and give it to your neighbor. So let's get started. Okay. So you're also gonna need a small size pot that you're gonna melt all your chocolate in. So you're gonna go ahead and pour all your chocolate in there. You are gonna go ahead and pour in your two cans of the sweetened condensed milk. All right, so you're just gonna keep stirring this around with your heat on until it is all melted and combined. Okay, so mine is all melted and nice and creamy. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off of the stove. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pour one third of this into the bottom of my eight by eight pan. Smooth that out real flat. Alrighty. Once that is all smooth and flat, we're gonna go ahead and put this inside the refrigerator for about five to seven minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to mix my two colors of orange and yellow and get them all ready. If your chocolate is starting to get too thick, you can always put it back on low heat just to get it like melted again. All right, so I just put my food coloring in my one bowl. I separated the last two colors and we're gonna go ahead and make our orange. Okay, so my orange and yellow are nice and vibrant. Very bright orange, very beautiful yellow. So my white chocolate is still in the fridge. I have a couple more minutes and then I can go ahead and do the orange, which would be the next layer. Okay, so I just took it out of the refrigerator. It is very nice and firm just from that like five or so minutes. All right, so it's been about, it's actually been about longer than five minutes. Um, I was just trying to clean up a little bit. So it's nice and firm. We're gonna go ahead and do our yellow. Get that nice and even. Every single year that I make this, I always, um, when I divide into the thirds, I always 
chintz out on the white because I'm always afraid I'm not gonna have enough orange or yellow. And I think I ended up doing that again this year, but it's okay, once you cut it, it looks fine. So just try to eyeball it and divide it evenly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back in the refrigerator, except this time we want it all to be really, really hard and firm, so that way when we cut it, um, it's not soft and you want nice straight edges when you cut it into the triangles. So we're gonna go ahead and put this, you can make this at night and um, cut it in the morning. In my case, it is morning, so I'm going to leave this in the refrigerator until maybe after dinner, then I'll come back and, and cut it. So I will show you this evening, once I take it back out, how I cut mine and what it looks like. So about six to eight hours or so would be ideal. Um, so like I said, you could do it in the morning, cut it at night, or make it at night and cut it in the morning. So you want it to be nice, firm, and hard. So there you go. I'll show you as best as I can, the white, the orange, and the yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge. And in my case, in my case, really quick, I am headed to the gym. So making this before you go to the gym, not a great idea. I don't recommend it because I've been licking the bowl. Um, so if you're in my scenario, go ahead and pop some soap in here so you do not lick the bowl. <laughs> How could you not though? So good. All right, everyone. So it's been eight hours. Um, when I started this video, it was nine o'clock in the morning. Actually, it's been more than eight hours. Now it's almost six o'clock. So my kids, since they've been home from school, have been bugging me to do this. Um, but we had to do homework and I had to get dinner started. So I just took it out and I just went around the edges and kind of just loosened it from the sides a little bit. Um, in the future, just make sure, uh, note to self as well, that the wax paper comes up a little higher so that way you can kind of pull it apart. I only did that on the one side. Uh, which is fine. So I kind of went around like that and just loosened it from the edges. Then you want to just turn it over. Oh. And it should pop right out. Okay, and then once you do that, then you just want to find the edges to peel off. To peel off your wax paper. So I'm going to go ahead and peel that all off. Okay, so I got all my wax paper off of the, uh, the white side. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make, we're gonna cut strips and then we'll do our triangles to make it look like the candy corn. Oh, and also you want a good knife. You don't want a knife that has the um, like different edges, like you want like a flat edge surface of the knife. So when it cuts, it's smooth, it's not like rigid. So you don't want ridges in your knife. All right, so there you have it. Look at that, how beautiful. Orange, white, yellow, looks awesome. So now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw our triangles. So you're gonna do every other. So some are gonna be with the white on top and some are gonna be with the white on the bottom. So you're gonna do, I feel like this could have been more frozen. I feel like it's kind of gooey. All right, tell me this is not gonna be a fail. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do every other. They do feel a little on the gooier side. All right, so there you have it. It's like a little candy corn fudge. I feel like I probably could have done way more yellow. I feel like my yellow is not as thick as my orange and my white. 
Um, but you get the gist of it. Before, at the beginning of the video, I was saying how I felt like my white was not gonna be thick enough, and now it's the yellow. So, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks really yummy. It tastes delicious. It really, really does. Um, if yours are still gooey, like mine are a little bit, after I cut them, you can always put them on a baking sheet with wax paper and put them back in the freezer. That way they'll freeze into the little candy corn triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut all my triangles. And then when I'm finished, I will show you what they all look like plated up. All right. All right, so most of them are all cut up and as you can see, some of them look really, really good. Some of them kind of don't, <laughs> but most of them look really good. So I'm pretty pleased with it. They taste really yummy. My 13 year old right now keeps stealing them, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the rest of them and put them in a container. So I really hope that you go ahead and try this recipe. Um, super easy delicious and great for Halloween. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you soon.